moved, so there's there's not anyone here right now. But if you're watching this back in the future, this was a rough stream to begin with. I'm not sure why, in particular, it's decided to be so difficult with me today. But am I? It seems smooth. Is it? Hi everyone, if you find me. Hello, hello, hello. I don't think it's buffering. I think that everything is smooth and it's a little bit more delayed than usual. Okay, well. I don't need these on then. I will await. Here we go. I think some people are coming in now. I think, yes, it seems smooth. Are we all good? Is the quality still nice? Can you still, can you still see me? I've not just turned into one giant pixel, have I? Everything fine? Brilliant? Yes, I changed a bitrate. I don't know why today it uh, changed its mind, but it did. That's all we can say. Hi everyone, thank you for rejoining me a million links down the road. I'm glad that you found me again. You had to reopen a YouTube. Brilliant. I'm glad of that. So yeah, maybe not the time to experiment with stuff, but when is the time? Uh, so yes, we are here to play some Architects of the West Kingdom. I have been playing a lot of West Kingdom in the last uh, few weeks. Although I suppose it's been, I bet it's been a while since I did that Viscount stream. Uh, and yeah, it was put into the playthrough vote. I got the Tome Saga, which we hadn't played yet, which makes them all one great big campaign game. You can have objectives and stuff and play through the trilogy that way. But also it turns each of the games into a cooperative game as well. So that that's came like second, I think, on the playthrough vote. So that's coming, uh, co-op versions of them. But then I thought I would do another vote to see what people would like to see live, see what solo games people would like to see. And uh, I think uh, Feast for Odin won, but that's coming down. Uh, that's tomorrow night we're doing that. But second, you know, following closely behind, is uh, some solo West Kingdom, which I am pretty pleased about because, yeah, I've, I've been playing it anyway. Like Odin, I've, I really want to play Odin. And so, yeah, I'm pretty pleased that it won the vote. It could have been Morty's fault. He's uh, he's not deigned to join us again. Not because uh, Rach was here in the last stream, taking up uh, his his rightful place. It might be Rach's chair, but Marty has uh, usurped that position. But yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> I broke your internet completely. I do apologise. Maybe it's just something about today. It's just ghosts in the machine. Uh, so I think. We are all up and running, and everything is groovy, I think. We'll have to check on that later on. So, Architects of the West Kingdom. We're building a West Kingdom. I haven't finished with the setup, clearly. But... Who needs setup games when the video itself won't work? So we are playing against, yes, that naughty Constantine, trying to, he knows I'm going to win, decided to start sabotaging the stream. Uh, so we're playing with the Age of Artisans expansion. That's what these things here, these tools, stroke adornments, and they tweak the rules a little bit for the solo. The solo just get a few extra points to try and even things out a bit. But largely it's the same whether you've got that expansion or not. It changes a few things that you see. There's a couple of overlays on the board but largely the game is the same. And I think I read that there's another expansion coming for this, a bigger expansion that complete, is completely gonna change the solo for it. So in the game, we are going to be recruiting these apprentices to give us various powers. We are going to be constructing buildings for points, loads and loads and loads of different ways of doing things. And we're gonna be doing a lot of it through worker placement. So loads of these spaces, 
You place a worker at the quarry, you get a stone. You place another worker at the quarry next time, you get two stone, because you've got two workers there now. And on and on and on, the more workers you put there. There's no limit to the number of players that can be there or number of your workers. But people can go to the town centre, and you can do this yourself, and arrest your workers from locations. So you can get them back later. It's it's actually the way of getting your workers back. It's not like you know a game where you put all your workers out and then you spend a turn bringing them all back. The way you get them back is people will have arrested them and you can arrest your own workers. They just go straight back to your board if you do that. But people will arrest them, take them to the guardhouse, get a bit of a financial reward for themselves. Uh, but then you can come to the guardhouse and get your workers back. And if people decide to dawdle with that and maybe hold your workers hostage on their player boards for a while, there is an action you can take to bring all of your workers back as well. So the way that it's going to work is largely the same as the, the normal game, but for our turns anyway, and then Constantine is going to take a turn, and his turn is dictated by a card. It's going to give us some simple instructions as to what he's going to do. It is probably... I don't, know, I don't want to put Architects down, because uh, I really enjoy it, especially solo. I'm only going to play Architects solo and co-op, by the way. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, the, I do prefer the other two more, but I do like the the snappiness of the solo in this and the the co-op too is pretty uh swift as well i'm not looking through the right book here i want to make sure that i am playing i've got everything set up right yes 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 deal all of your cards do all of that yes i believe we're all set up and yes the the, the time we played at co-op was our first time with the expansion and rachel's first time with the game in general actually Rach not too fussed about it. Uh, but yeah, the expansion, I think, is a real, real boon to it. So, what would we like to do? We do start off, we look over my player area here, start off with a choice of five building cards, and you have to pick three of those to start the game with. These are some of the things that I can get points with. These are all of the ways that I can get points and lose points throughout the game. But yes, I have the fountain, the gallery, and the treasury. There is... You know, there's a mixture of... I believe in this game it's just... There will be from the base game or the expansion. I haven't got any promos or anything like that. Tome Saga, that expansion that makes them all co-op or a campaign, comes with some extra things for each game. So it came with uh, some extra player boards for this, uh, some extra citizens for paladins, and, uh, yeah, the, the, the people that you can hire. Maybe the citizens in Viscounts as well. So, some more cards for the other two games as well, which is cool. But yeah, just playing with the orange player, by the way, comes with the Age of Artisans expansion. Uh, so you can, you can play six players as well. Paladins, Architects and Viscounts. Oh, I think uh, at the moment I need to play Paladins again because I haven't played Paladins in a while now. It's been all, uh, ar it's been all Architects and Viscounts. But I think, I think it'd be Viscount, Paladin, Architects for me, which I think is uh, pretty... I don't know, vanilla, but it's, it's pretty much, it seems to be the prevailing opinion. I would love to be breaking out of that and being radical. You're, you've got a radical opinion, Janeway. But you just you just enjoy them all, and Viscounts is the, just happens to be at the bottom of that, or we're not that uh, fussed about Viscounts. Right, we're going to... So we're going to build these buildings. These are the resources we need to be able to build those buildings. We also need, we don't need them for the fountain, but we also need to have some apprentices of, with certain skills. See, there's an axe, a uh, gold thing, and a hammer. Uh, they are on the top of apprentices we can hire. To be able to build that building, we need to have apprentices of those types. Oh, there you go. That's the little icon that says this is from the expansion. And... So we could go for building the fountain straight away. We need some stone and some marble, which is a bit trickier to get. Uh, but this would, when we get debt cards, we lose two points for each unpaid debt at the end of the game. But if we've got a fountain, you only lose one point for each of them at the end of the game. So I'm kind of keen on that. I think, how is... Um, I don't know if all of these other things are working out. My attempts to post the video elsewhere. I think they've all turned off now. I should make sure there's not some rogue thing running uh, of one of the old streams or something. I don't know that how that would happen because I have uh, restarted everything. But I think 
Oh, it's live. There's there's about five uh, live videos on uh, on Facebook now. But I, I hope people would. Uh, Maybe I won't continue this experiment. We'll see if people watch on there. Uh, I thought, there's a trial being offered. I'll see what it's like. I'll see if it causes issues. It did cause issues. I don't know how, but it did. So we could go for the fountain. So I'm going to need some stone first. We could think about hiring some people from the workshop, but I only start with three coins. And to hire a person, it costs four, unless I want to come over to the black market. Now, if I'm willing to lower my virtue, I could spend two coins, lose one virtue, and come over to the black market here to just hire any of them. And usually, if we go over to the workshop, you have to pay four coins. The different color of coins mean the, the, the reddish ones go to the tax space. You're still paying four, and you can get a discount of uh, some tax if you are not so virtuous, if you are more corrupt. Uh, but then you also, the advantage of building up meeples here is, if you want to get building cards, you'll get more in one go. But if you want workers, you have to have this many workers here to choose those uh, workers. But you can pay coins to skip over them as well. So would we like to get someone instead? So we can have things like the, ant the antagonist here. If we go to the town centre, one of the slots, we can treat it as if we have an extra worker. I like the stone cutter. Every time we go to the quarry, we get an extra stone. The merchant would give us an action. When we go to the king's storehouse, we have some usual options that everyone has access to. But if you have this merchant, you can pay three coins for a marble. I think I would like to start out hiring someone. And I'm not so scared of debts because... I, I, they're only one negative point to me. So I think I'm going to start out being... A little bit bad, a little bit naughty. I'm going to head over to the black market over here. So there's three spaces. These spaces are get the resources that you can see here, which would be nice. I could pay all of my coins and get the marble I need straight away and one of the three stone that I need. That would be all of my money and I wouldn't have an apprentice. And once I get that fountain out, it doesn't get me anywhere. I could come back here later. I'm going to hire the person. I'm going to hire... Yeah, I think I'm going to hire that stone cutter I was talking about. So when I go to the quarry, I get an extra stone every time. So they're going to come over to here. And I, well, now I've got apprentices, I can start getting uh, tools and stuff for them, as well as when you make buildings, you can do adornments. We'll talk about those when uh, they happen, though. I'm going to have a drink. All of this uh, stream business has stressed me out. Paladins number one, architects number two, and viscounts. Can't wrap head out of the mechanisms fit together. It is stranger. I was uh, pretty clueless after my first game of it and uh, frustrated. It seems like if somebody goes for the, it seems like if somebody goes for the castle, you can't leave them alone on it. Whereas the other things maybe you can more. It's like if if somebody. Especially like in a two-player game, if somebody just gains control of the castle and has all of their workers in there, you need to get involved too and get some points and maybe knock some of their people out of the castle too. I see what you mean. And I, I played against the bot that puts people in the castle loads, and yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. So I'm coming over to the black market. I do have some options as well. I've hired that person. I could have looked at five building cards and picked one, and I could... Uh, oh, this is once the black market is full, there's a black market reset. We'll see that later. Hi, Steve. <laughs> I like to bombard you until you want to come over and have a look. Uh, Steve's uh, been bombarded with notifications on Facebook. We we had technical difficulties. But I'm glad to know that the, the stream is live over there. I didn't know how the chat would come through on this. So, I've had my one turn. I've come over to the black market. It might have taken me 37 minutes, but I've taken a turn. Uh, so we can come over now to Constantine, who has a deck of cards here. Doesn't need any resources. These are my coins. He doesn't need... You can tell they're my coins because he doesn't need any. Uh, we can flip this up. And he is going to the guardhouse. And he'll take as many actions as possible in the following order. So he pops over for a start to the guardhouse there. So he's got one of his workers in there. 
and then what's he going to do? So first of all, he will try to free all of his workers from the guardhouse. There are none in there, so he's not going to do that. He will hand in all of my workers to the prison to get a marble. Marble is worth a point for him, as it is for me as well. Gold and marble are worth points for me. Can't do that. Uh, so he can spend two coins. That's making a... That's that's release his prisoners from me if I had his prisons. Oh, I've not paid... Co oh, thanks, Jack. I haven't... Uh, too busy talking about the actions. I haven't actually resolved anything for it. I need to pay my two coins and lo lower my virtue. So, yeah, he is not doing any of that. He's not really doing much, is he? Uh, bad first action to pick, uh, Constantine. He can do this one, though. So this would be him releasing his workers from my player board. This is, he pays three coins, kind of. They come from the supply, and they go into the tax. He would lose a debt, hasn't got one, gain a virtue. So I suppose he'll do that. So his three coins come to the tax stand. This is a worker placement spot we can go to. Lose two virtue and get all of the coins from here. It can get really, really full up of coins, I've found, in the solo game really nice uh, so he gains a virtue by doing that and um, something I have to think about for virtue I can't use the black market if I get too virtuous you know nobody would trust me there goody two-shoes if I get too corrupt I can't build in the cathedral which is a good way of uh, earning some money so that's Constantine's turn he went there he's got a bit of a flow chart for stuff that he does there so that's all he's doing I've got to start on my quarrying now. I think we'd better go to the quarry. Pop a worker down there. I've got one worker, so I get one stone. But I've also got my uh, stone cutter, the No Homers Club, which lets me get a second stone. So I'll pop that over here. I am Gisela, by the way. One of the characters that comes with the expansion. Now, the, the other thing with the solo is... The, the standard way that you play is, um, you know, the, the normal setup. All of these characters, I won't flip her over right now, have different setups, have variable setups, different levels up on the virtue track, different number of coins they start with, different number of uh, workers in the prison. For the solo game, you can do it like that, but it isn't balanced towards that. I think I remember seeing it in the forums. So you play with just the standard setup. In the co-op game, though, you can play with all the variables. And, yeah, we mentioned earlier on, there's going to be another expansion with uh, a brand new revamped solo mode. I bet you'll be able to use the variable powers in that as well. Hi, Henry. Henry? I don't know why I put a D in your name there. Hi, Henry. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you're enjoying it. So... I went to the quarry, I got my two stone. It's time for Constantine to have a peek. He's going to the town centre. That's not good for me wanting to build up workers at the quarry. He pops over here. This is where I would want to come. Oh, not that one. This is where I would want to come to arrest workers as well. It would cost me coins, all of that stuff. It, of course, doesn't cost Constantine any of that. Apologies if you can hear that. Yappy dogs. Uh, so... What Constantine will do, captures all your workers from the location with the most, excluding the tax stand, if Tide follow this order. So, you can't arrest workers from the black market. So basically, he is going to arrest my worker from the quarry. The one worker I had out there goes to his section there. So I've got to wait for him to take that to the guardhouse as a prisoner. Really, really mad about something, those dogs. I just sound crazy if you can't hear that. <laughs> but it's frustrating if you can. Uh, so I can come over here, you know, if I am willing to gain a debt and lose a virtue and break them out of prison or gain loads of coins, then I could just grab my workers from his player board and not let him gain a benefit for handing them in or any of that. Wouldn't really be worth it for one worker, but, you know, later on, maybe I'm going to be uh, money bags over here. So I've got nothing in the quarry anymore. I do want one more stone, but I've got to think about the marble as well. So a way of getting marble is the king's storehouse here. Is that on this camera? No, it's on the lower one. Remember, the lower one's got most of the locations. I'll try and keep that in mind. So at the king's storehouse, I can trade in three of some combination of stone stroke wood and get marble. 
I can hire other apprentices and stuff to try and uh, earn marble, like the one that converted coins into marble. So I could try and build up stone with that as well. Do I bullheadedly just, I'm trying, I'm gonna try and go to the quarry again. Hopefully he's not gonna be on a rest watch. So I get two stone again for that because I just get one more than I normally should. So I'm gonna pop them there. Can you see them? Maybe I'll put them on the table so they're a bit more of a contrast. So I'm going to bullheadedly try and go to the uh, quarry. Ugh. He's going straight to the... Oh, he should have put a coin in tax when he went to the town centre. Uh, he's going straight back there. And he is arresting my worker from the quarry. How many coins have I got? I've got one coin. So I can come over to the black market here still and gain a gold and a wood. But that tax stand is looking quite attractive now as a way of getting coins. Now there is the silversmith over here. Works the same way as the other resource spaces. Pop a worker down, get one coin. Another worker, you've got two there, you get two coins. But getting five in one go, if I'm willing to take the hit uh, virtue-wise, could be something worth pursuing. Hello. Played uh, paladins and you played this, but not paladins and discounts, viscounts. Yeah, I do like the idea of discounts of the West Kingdom. That could be a future one. Could be an expansion. Well, surely that's what they'll say when they have a sale on the store. I'm going to be playing through uh, all of them over some kind of period. Hopefully, paladins will be next week if there is time for it. So yeah, tax stand I think is looking pretty grand. To get those, that amount of coins this early. And there are always ways of bumping yourself back up in the virtue as well. I will say, not to show off, but uh, just in case you're thinking of getting hold of the game, the metal coins came separately. It comes with cardboard coins in all of the games. But, like I say, I've been playing these a lot lately. I, uh, I went for the metal coins when I grabbed a copy of Hadrian's War. Uh, so, Constantine's turn. He's going to the black market. So when he goes to the black market, he basically goes in the first space that he's allowed to go in because I'm not there. Uh, and then gets the reward that is next to it. So where's he going to go? He will sit in the right hand space down here and get himself. He loses a virtue. Oh, you can see the virtue as well. And gets himself two marble. So that's two points. Yeah, gain the rewards here rather than the ones that are on the board. And that eventually will lead to um, triggering a black market reset where you have to be worried if you've got people in prison and stuff. What new games am I missing out on? It's, it's loads of Kickstarters lately, isn't it? Loads starting up uh, all at once. What else happened today? Um... It wasn't today, was it? They all launched yesterday. The Isle of Cats expansion. I played it on the channel not long ago. I really, really like that. It's really... Uh, not just adding all of the kittens and the new boats and stuff to it. That wooden insert looks beautiful. Oh yeah, Google Mason, you're absolutely right. Silversmith is one plus a coin. But uh, yeah. They build up as you put more workers there. But yeah, you get a silver plus a silver for every worker. Yeah, that huge Witcher board game, hasn't that got like a million dollars? Uh, and the mines is the same. A brick plus a brick for every worker. So he's gone to that black market space. I've got to decide what to do. I've got a load of coins now. Do I want to head over to hire somebody for, oh, pay, paperback adventures. I'm uh, really, really looking forward to. I, I like paperback. Uh, wood based um, deck building game really enjoyed that this is like making it solo and I believe there's a, it's just reached a stretch goal for two players but making it like a roguelike kind of game and uh, I love I've, I've tried others but not found the same love that I found for um, Slay the Spire which I've sunk countless hours into which I, I bet most people that have uh, gotten into Slay the Spire have lost themselves in it for a while yeah, I saw, I saw a picture of um, a playtest from Garfield of uh, Mysterious Something something of the South Something, which is at 2.6 million. Wow. 
It's huge. Oh, do you know what else I'm looking forward to? I'm not really, uh, I haven't really delved that deeply into RPGs in general, really, apart from uh, a couple of sessions of uh, D&D once, uh, a couple once. Uh, but I, I started looking into this world that I hadn't really seen of, of solo ones and Iron Sworn. Watched some really, really good uh, videos about Iron Sworn. Me, myself, and Die is a fantastic uh, YouTube channel for that. And I've had a few goes of that myself, but it's on Kickstarter now with like a sci fi uh, version of it, Star Forged. And that's, that's huge as well. I think, what's that at? It's at hundreds of thousands of dollars, which for a solo. Uh, RPG thing because I, I would have thought before like how would that even work but yeah it's it's amazing how uh, the storytelling in these things works Knights of the East Sussex Kingdom <laughs> yeah, I think they just they just plunk it into a word generator they just tear up loads of pieces of paper throw them in the air and come up with the game like that that's how David Bowie wrote lyrics isn't it so I was, t I was talking about do I want to come over and hire a person I I I'm not feeling too excited by these people right now, to be honest with you. I could think about recruiting someone and getting a tool for one of my workers. I have to say, yeah, now there are workers like this squire here. He triggers when the black market is reset, which happens usually when all of the spaces are filled up there, all of the worker placement spaces. There are, there's, there's another time that that can happen, but... So when that does happen, if I've got no workers in prison, I would get a gold. So that would want me to be uh, quite on top of when my workers go to prison. Hmm. What does that strongman do? Does that remove people from the game? If I could get a load of wood, yeah, two wood for a gold is quite nice. Oh, the strongman affects your artisan, doesn't he? Yeah, because I had um, an art a, a strongman that your artisan captures all workers of a single colour from the location where it was placed. Oh, okay. So we've got part of the expansion here, which I probably should have been using by now. Part of the expansion is your artisan here. Everyone's got a big meeple that they can place down, and the turn that they place it, it counts as two workers. Future counts as one. Still be arrested, all of that doesn't hold any special uh, power there. But strongmen can be hired that give that artisan special abilities. I'm tempted to hire that strongman and use him to assist me. Oh, um, he should have an extra worker on the town centre here. In using my artisan to arrest people. I could, of course, go over to the town centre and arrest his workers a bit. Because I get money for arresting his workers and taking them to prison. I don't really fancy them building up too much. But two, two wood for a gold is quite nice because you have to build up in the mines for quite a while over there. Oh, Michael, you've said the same. Two wood uh, in gold is a, two, is a good trade. And it would be another different symbol. Mind you, the strong man has got two symbols on him. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come over to the workshop. I've got a feeling about this strong man. Give my... Um, artisan a special ability it costs me four coins two of which come over to the tax stand famous Beatles song and I get oh I've only got one worker there though so I would have to pay another coin to get him maybe I want to get the antagonist later on though and I'm happy to do that I'm going for it uh, not, not just because I've made the decision and don't want to take it back uh, our thoughts on Radius of Scythia. Scythia. Um, I didn't really play Raiders of the North Sea very much. We played it once at a gaming group, probably when the first Kickstarter delivered. And I remember it being too mean for us. Uh, but that that's my vague memories of it. And it's kind of why. And and hearing about the way Architects worked when that first came out. And getting when... I think it was it with a meeting of Renegade at one of the Essens? I thought, yeah, from the sounds of it, Architect is not um, for me. Maybe these West Kingdom games just aren't for me. And I kind of... Thanks, Jack. Uh, only two go to the tax stand. Uh, and so, yeah, I'd, I'd ignored them kind of until 
I th at some point last year, I bought Paladins after seeing it in social media enough times saying how good a solo game it was. I ended up getting a hold of it and really enjoying it. Did the same for Viscounts. It annoyed me <laughs> to begin with, but yes, I, I take all that back now. Really, really enjoy Viscounts now. And then had to complete the trilogy with Architects. But yes, I'm hiring a new person, and hopefully now my artisan's going to stomp around uh, hiring people. Raiders of Scythia looks uh, beautiful. Not that you know, the Miko's art, without question, is uh, is fantastic. But I do really like the style of uh, Sam Phillips's art as well. If you saw my Hadrian's Wall stream from last week, and there'll be uh, a, a filmed playthrough of it as well coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Sam Phillips' art is uh, beautiful too, and... Raiders of Scythia does that. I, I don't really know the differences of that. I know it's kind of it's based on Raiders of the North Sea, right? But it's got its own twists and turns and stuff. Uh, so what's Constantine doing? He is going to the town centre, and so he's going to arrest. Oh no, he needs one of his own workers, not one of mine. And he's going to arrest the places from the the most people with the most of my workers apart from the tax stand, which means he arrests... Yes, he goes to the town centre, he's going to put a coin in the tax stand, and he's going to arrest my worker from the workshop. I don't think... I think in the sphere of, like, take that and stuff, it's, like, the mildest it could possibly be. And I think... This is this is going to be in, like, first impressions and stuff, uh, too. I think it's a really, really clever idea. And I, I like how, you know, you don't even have to spend a turn bringing all your workers back. There's, there's games that make that turn more interesting by giving you extra options. Like Cryo was one we played that was called Gave You a Load of uh, Resource Conversion Opportunities Once You Brought All of Your Workers Back. So this, like, eliminates that turn entirely. And you've got so many workers that... It so rarely matters that workers of yours have been arrested and stuff. And it's, you know, you need to build up your workers to get, you know, more and more resources. So you need to be stopped from doing that or you will just get a ridiculous amount. You, know, you get 10 workers in a space and uh, you've built up such a ridiculous amount of coins or something like that. You need to be stopped. And whether someone cares about stopping you from doing anything or not, the fact that you've got three workers, four workers in one place, I could just come to the town's end for one coin, arrest, round up, you know, arrest them, and then hopefully I'll be able to hand them into the guardhouse, get a load of coins myself for handing in all of these outlaws. And yeah, it's it's inconvenience you. It could be targeted and stuff. I think it's uh, definitely very mild, and uh, I really admire the system. But I know, and I've had it confirmed now, <laughs> that Rach just played the co-op version and seen the uh, the Overlord doing it to us. That uh, yes, she, she wouldn't want to do it, and uh, I wouldn't want to do it either. I can, st I still stand by fantastic system, and think the only thing really like it. Uh, but yeah, not uh, not in it for. Uh, competitive to us because even though it is like you need to do that and you you can't just keep building all of these things up i still wouldn't want to do it but uh, yes thanks for the reminder james all of this is possible thanks to my patreon patreon.com forward slash slicker drips if you'd like to help me keep making playthroughs like this and the recorded ones and the top tens and all of that other stuff that i do uh yes like and subscribe and comment and stuff I, i'm used to saying that on the uh, YouTube, but there's the equivalent, right? You can like things on Facebook. I'm sure I've been on Facebook before, right? Uh, you can you can follow on Twitch. Hey, this is streamed everywhere. This is global. Not that YouTube wasn't already global. I'll stop talking. Let's go for a turn, eh? So the tax stands building up a little bit more, but I think he's got three workers holed up in the town center right now. So I can use the artisan's ability to capture my own workers too, but not the artisan. I'm going to send... Uh, I want to send my artisan to the town centre because he would just arrest these thanks to the strongman's ability. And then I can maybe hand them in later for some nice coinage. But using the town centre's actual action, I would have to spend a coin and then I would what, arrest this guy from the guardhouse. I think maybe wait on that a little bit. So what do I want to do in the meantime? I've got all of this stone. If I want to get anything built, I need a wood, I need some gold. I think, let's head over to the silversmith. Have a little turn. Gets me a couple of coins. One plus one for the number of workers that you've got in there. 
Just have a little turn for now. Uh, Constantine is going to the king's storehouse, and this is where you want to stop him building up workers. He gets a virtue for every worker there. It's his first worker. He gets a virtue. I want to stop him doing that too much. I can do that as well. Cost me resources, of course. I don't get to cheat, unlike Constantine. So, my artisan could come over there as well and just arrest him. Now, I, I do want to do other stuff and I want to go to the forest and all of that jazz, but I'm kind of feeling like while I've had a little bit of room to place more workers down, I might go to the silversmith again because that's three more coins, isn't it? I think I'm going to do that. So now I've got six. I could hire another worker. I could hire that uh, trader and get some gold, maybe. Constantine, what are you up to? Oh, dear. Going back to the king's storehouse. Well, we might have to stop him. Not now. We can't stop him doing this now. Gets two. Because he, he gets points, basically. You lose points if you're low down uh, on virtue. Gain points if you're high up on virtue. We don't want him to get loads of points. So I might have to go there and arrest some of his workers. But what Oh, I could, I could do... So coming here... My strongman's ability lets me arrest everyone on the space of, of one colour, everyone of one colour, on the space where I place my artisan. And then the actual action, uh, so you f have a worker there and pay a coin to arrest a group of people. So it has to be all of one colour from one location. I believe in up to a two-player game it can be from two locations as well. I think it's the same it's the same for solo, right? Can I arrest from two locations? Can capture and sell workers. Yes, he can capture and sell workers. I think as it's like a two player game, I can arrest uh, his workers from two places, can't I? Just double check before I I would only take one more worker than I was meant to. But let's not play the whole rest of the game like that. Yes, can capture from up to two locations in solo and two and three player play. This goes up to six players. So, I could arrest all of his people from, by paying my coin to the tax, I could arrest all of his people from the king's storehouse and the guardhouse. So, if I went to the guardhouse now on a future turn, I could put all of these in prison and I would get six coins, a coin for each of them which is sounding pretty attractive right now. If he goes to the guardhouse, though, he gets to buy them all back, I think. So I hope he doesn't. Let's see where he's off. He's going to the town centre. Uh, so he goes there, and he's going to arrest the workers on the space with the most, which is the silversmith. He's got two. So do I... Do you know what I could do? I could send all of his workers to prison and then force a black market reset and make him lose a virtue. Because when the black market resets, which it would do once it's full, I could... So everyone who's got three or more workers in prison loses a virtue. The person with the most workers in prison gains a debt. Oh yes, I need to pay for the second capture as well. Because I had two captures there. Okay, so, so there's no need to pack a capture twice, maybe, because it's just spent a coin to gain a coin. It'd be okay. It balances out, doesn't it? I don't want him to have people on the board. So I think before he goes to the guardhouse and robs me of my opportunity to earn even more money, I'm going to run off to the guardhouse there. One action per worker. So you can, this is what I am doing. So you can hand in all of your arrested workers, get a coin for each of them. That's what I'm doing right now. So he's got all of those people in prison. I get six coins for that. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can free all of your workers, no cost, that have been put in prison. Uh, you can pay that cost, as I mentioned before, to get all of your workers back from other people's player boards. And you can pay six coins, three are taxed, to unflip a debt so when you gain a debt it's two i didn't even need to pick it up it's two negative points but when you flip it you gain a virtue and you don't lose those two points 
So that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully, he's going to prove me right and uh, he's going to go to the guardhouse and release everyone. No, he's going back to the king's storehouse. He gets a virtue for every worker there. Just one. Okay. So do I want to go to the black market and force a reset? He'd lose a virtue and gain a debt. And I could pay a coin and lose a virtue to get a gold and a wood. And I want a gold. A gold and a wood, and I could build the treasury here. Treasury is worth six points. Immediately get a gold or three coins. And once I've built something, I can put an adornment on it, get some points and stuff. Yeah, let's do that and see some adornments. So I'm going to come over to the black market. Plus this is going to force the reset. Costs me a coin and I lose a virtue. So I can't build in the cathedral anymore until I've gained some reputation. The church doesn't want to see me there. But now, whenever I have to pay tax somewhere, I can ignore one of the tax because I'm so corrupt. I'm such a bad guy that, uh, yeah, and I can ignore more. If, but if you go off the bottom of the, the track, uh, you start gaining debts and you lose a load of points for being down here. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's good and bad for it. So I gain a gold and a wood. And then there is a black market reset. The black market is full. This triggers a reset. Everyone from the black market. So the explanation thematically is like the king turns a blind eye to a load of this uh, silliness that's going on here until we start arresting each other. But uh, every now and then it gets too obvious. When the black market's full, it throws everyone there in prison. And then if you've got three or more workers, lose a virtue. And whoever's got the most workers in prison, Constantine gains a debt, right? Unless uh, I'm doing all of that wrong. So I'm going to put the debt right on him there. So he's going to lose two points. He does get to flip that, though, uh, if uh, if he goes to the guardhouse. It'll be okay. So what am I doing? I just went to the black market. That was my turn. Oh, the other thing that happens in the black market reset, this card flips over, and you've got new options. Oh, I can get some marble. I need that. But I could come back here and get another worker, or maybe even a tool. Let's see. Constantine, in the meantime, is going to the town centre. He's going to arrest some people. So, over to the town centre. And I have got a worker in the town centre and a worker in the guardhouse. So, what does he... What's his preference? So, King Storehouse, town centre. Town centre is first, so he's going to arrest my artisan. Guardhouse is near the, very near the bottom. So my artisan goes to his supply. I'd kind of like him to go to the guardhouse to release my workers. But also I could go to the guardhouse again and force them to be released. Get these back. And then pay to get all of mine back. Because then he doesn't get a marvel for handing my workers in. It is expensive though. I do get to ignore one of those costs. Or I could just come over to the workshop and hire, say that trader. Get an easy way of getting some gold turn wood into virtue turn money into marble or we could as well get a tool so if we look up at the top here this is part of the expansion right tools and adornments so there are other ways you can get them other than the black market you can get tools at the black market not adornments but i could get a tool from one of my workers and when their effect would normally activate this effect would happen as well. So gain a building card, gain a coin, free one of your workers from prison. And these uh, get applied to buildings. And there's an immediate effect of those. I don't know that an effect would happen that much though. Now you can have up to five of these apprentices. Or, what, or should we do a building? I said I was going to do a building. Uh, oh yes, Mike, Michael is right. I could lose a virtue and gain a debt if I wanted to get my prisoners back too rather than pay the money. And there's plenty of ways of paying debts back later. But for, for now I'm going to build. I would get loads of those workers back and that's an artisan back as well. I'm thinking about it. I'm going to build for now, though. Let's build this treasury, see how a building works, and realise that I've left no space for any of this stuff. Uh, so, 
the building cost. I have to send a worker to the guild hall, so this worker is not coming back. The game ends after 12 constructions in the guild hall or the cathedral. I have to pay a wood, a gold, and three stone. I've got all of that. I've got one stone left now to my name. I have to have a worker with that symbol on there. I do. And then I have as an immediate effect a gold or three coins. I don't need a gold for these building cards. Gold is worth points at the end. But I think I want to try and hire some people. And it's expensive to get adornments. I'm going to take the three coins. Hi, Adam. How's it going in New Zealand? I don't know why I froze then. I was thinking about uh, New Zealand. Well, my only references for New Zealand are Taskmaster and Flight of the Concords, but great references. So that's a great CV for New Zealand, to be honest. Oh, and Lord of the Rings, of course. Um, so I've got I've built my treasury now. So what this is going to allow me to do, you can come to the black market to get that tool that I mentioned, but you can also pop a worker on top of a worker that's already been placed in the guild hall. So you're losing another worker, but it's not filling up another space here, to get a tool, or pop a worker on top of another worker and get and pay five coins. I would get a discount of that. And then I can buy one of those adornments. So I get an immediate benefit. So I can repeat the action of the building that it's placed on, get three building cards, wipe the display of apprentices and get and grab any of the ones that come out, as well as get those points. So what would I like to do there? I've done my thing. I'm just talking about what I might do in the future, aren't I? So I've done my build now. You can also come to the guild hall to build in the cathedral. Costs you, you... You work up these steps, basically. Costs you a gold and a building card. Just discard a building card. And you'll get these points at the end of the game. And you also get these rewards. There are some uh, mystery reward cards in there. Which... Did I have marble? At some point? What's happened with marble, Andre? What have I done? Uh, so. Constantine's turn. He's going to the tax stand. It's mm, unfortunate. So, it re returns any coins from the tax stand to the display. There's four there, but I am pretty loaded at the moment. And he loses two virtue. Right, you can't quite see his virtue. Loses two of it, but he gains a marble. That's a point for him. Okay. So now I could go and get a tool. I could build an adornment. I like the idea of building an adornment. I've got a load of money. And I'm not particularly fussed about these apprentices, to be honest. Oh, so gold's worth point. Gold is worth points at the end, isn't it? It's not for Constantine, but for me it is. Gold or marble are worth a point each. Or are they not in solo? Yeah, you score as normal. Your opponent scored just for marble. But that's just because they only gain uh, marble, isn't it? Where well, there's a bit of a bigger delay as well. In uh, between me seeing these things now. I realised that having it on ultra low latency turns off the turns off the option to have closed captions. You know, YouTube automatically generates some subtitles, which are sometimes a little bit uh, out there. But uh, yeah, I think it should be there as an option, right? Be uh, as accessible as possible. Oh, does the the other side of the player board with the variable powers. Well, that still has that, though. Maybe there's a mode. I don't know. But yeah, you can play as, lo as well as that variable stuff I was mentioning earlier, where you start off with a different amount of coins and virtue and all that stuff. You have a special ability, too. 
Uh, mine was, uh, when we played the co-op game, mine was when you buy a tool, you also get the instant benefit of an adornment. So he's gone to the tax stand. It's my turn again. I think... I, I, I fancy an adornment. Let's do an adornment. So I lose another worker in the guild hall and I'm going to have to pay five coins. Two of it is taxed, so I get to ignore one of it. So I'll put the one tax in the tax stand. And then three go to the supply. And I... I'm tempted to grab this adornment, just get three more coins, and I've earned two points that way. But I think I'm going to go for this. I want another apprentice. So this is clear the display and then grab an apprentice. And this is worth uh, three points at the end of the game. So that gets tucked in that building. That's what it uh, equates to. Uh, we need a new one. It's uh, get your workers back from prison, isn't it? Yes and four points. So I need to clear the display. We lose the coin that's on that uh, apprentice. And we have to refill it. So what have we got here? I get to gain one of these. So let's see. I could get a one discount at the black market. I would lose a virtue just for taking this person, though. Get an extra brick when I go to the mines. Trade a stone for a virtue at the king's storehouse. Could be a good combo since I earn extra stone. I could get a strongman and add an extra ability to my artisan that gives him a two discount on whatever he's doing. When I go to the silversmith, get an extra silver. Trade two stone for a marble. Marble is... Uh, That's a one discount, isn't it? I'm getting marble, but I can only use stone. Uh, the gatekeeper. Is that just a... Oh, and the black market reset. I get two people back. But yes, I think because I am so corrupt and... Because I'm so corrupt and I am pretty good at producing stone. What a combo. I'm going to grab uh, the patron. So I am gaining this as a result of a... No bonus, so I don't. Um, do the rest of it. I don't have to pay or do any works or anything like that. But then, yeah, it's worth uh, earning some stone. Then I think after that, Audrey, it's it's probably I'm having that at the moment as well. That uh, seeing all of these games, the West Kingdom rules might start merging. Could possibly be one of those. Hi, Nath. Okay, how's it going? It's already gone. Stone for Virtue sounds good. Yes. I think that sounds good. Right. It's Constantine's turn. I don't need to think about anything. Guardhouse. That's okay. Uh, so he comes over to the guardhouse. He is going to... So he does all of this, doesn't he? A uh, one per worker. Okay, so he's only got one worker there. So all he does is get to... I'm glad you hung around. We can, we can see each other now. It's allowed. Yes. I don't know why I keep pausing in all of this. Hopefully, I'm, I'm getting... Uh, it's not apparent yet, but I think I'm getting destroyed by an AI in a game. But yes, we can, uh, we can have that alien situation of uh, human interaction again. So he's gone to the guardhouse. He's going to hand in all of my people, including my artisan, so I'm a lot more tempted to go back there and get them back. Which I think the last game we played wasn't that like thinking, sorry for everyone else. 
<laughs> Firstly, was wasn't didn't we play like Mechs versus Minions? Uh, it's like last January, I think. That's scary. Uh, he freezes people. Oh, of course, yes, that's what he does. So I had I had two in prison already. He gets those back. Of course, his priority is to free his people. He wants to keep being able to take turns. I am still quite tempted to just run over and get all of my people back. If he's going to hold out on me. And then he won't be able to get a marble. Okay, it's back to me. Because I am worth a fortune right now. I do want to go to the quarry. And start building up some stone. I can start turning it into virtue and all that goodness. So, I'm tempted to go back there. I've got all of this money. How much would it cost me to get my people back? I could just take that debt, especially since I can get virtue back now. Or I could just pay four to get all of my people back. I'm, I'm going to go to the guardhouse. So with one action, I can just get these people back. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to drop down the virtue and take a debt to free my people from everyone else's player boards. And I've got my artisan back now. Let's see what Constantine's going to do. He's going to go to the guild hall. Oh, okay. So his first build. Uh, so. It's too small over there. Uh, he pops his worker in the next place, takes the first possible action, moves their player marker one space up the cathedral. Yes, he can do that. There is space. And discards the top reward card. We'll never know what that could have been. So he's in two points there. And yeah, two stone for marble would make building the cathedral a lot easier. Especially, I'm good at getting stone, aren't I? I could go for the black market too. And just hire him. Not have to worry about getting a load of people there. I think first up, I'm going to try... Let's just go to the quarry. And... I get two, don't I? I get two thanks to my person. Constantine pops over. He's going to the guild hall again. <gasps> oh, no. So what this means is he pops another worker in the guild hall and this is for the new expansion uh, thing. He The two apprentices here get cleared off. So we can see some new ones. He's made the one I want a bit cheaper. And then he's moving up again, isn't he? And discarding a reward card. He's racing away with that. It'd be okay though, wouldn't it? Then, let's see, I've still got my, I've still got some good other buildings. The gallery would just get me an adornment right away when I build it. So what would I like to do next? I've got a, I've got a bit of stone, but I probably want some, I can only do one action at the storehouse though. I don't, I'd want to build up my stuff there to try and do multiple things. I could just go up there and gain a virtue. But I could go there with my artisan as well. Get two actions straight away and arrest him. Yeah, while he hasn't arrested me yet, I'm going to go to the quarry again, which is going to get me three more stone. <laughs> I, I think I think the tide's turning and uh, Constantine has woken up to, to the cathedral. He's going to the king's storehouse. So yeah, I'm definitely going to go there next. Going to the King's Storehouse, gain a virtue for each of these. One, two. On the Guildhall card, it's just he takes the first possible action rather than doing them all. So because he could move up the Cathedral, he just did that and doesn't do the marble thing. I believe. 
So going to the King's Storehouse again, I think I'm going to go there with my artisan, which lets me arrest everyone there. And I've got some good stone. I am going to turn one in to gain a virtue. Bump me back up a bit. And then I could just buy some marble. I don't want to buy another virtue. I think I'm going to spend three of this stone to get a marble. And then I just need one more stone and I could do the fountain. A stone and a brick and I could do the gallery. And I could do with thinking about getting some more building cards as well. So I've got some more choice. But hey. So that's my two actions there. I need to do Constantine's turn. He's going to the workshop. I should have thought about putting small text far away from me. Uh, he's paying two coins to the tax stand and he is taking the apprentice in the bottom right corner. If possible, add a future scheme card per worker to the pile. So he's only got one worker there. He discards this worker. So they're going to shift along. Oh, my marble, of course. Thank you. And he's got one worker there. So he adds a future scheme to the discard pile. That's another visit to the guild hall in his deck now. Okay. As for me, I'm tempted to go back to the quarry. That's four stone, isn't it? Which I can use to convert into things. I'm going back there. While he's not going to the town centre, I'm going to grab four stone. Two, three, four. And then he's going to go back. Oh, he's going straight back to the workshop. Pops another two coins in tax. To oh, no. I should have arrested him takes that worker away and then he's got two here he's putting two better cards in his discard pile okay it's unlikely he's going back there isn't it but I'm tempted to arrest him just so they don't build up I'm tempted to go to the tax stand because it's five coins hmm I think, yeah, maybe we could arrest a couple of locations later on. I'm going to go to the town centre and arrest these. And I can go back there and to the guardhouse and get four coins for that. He's going to the black market in the rightmost space. And he loses a virtue and gets two marble, two points. <laughs> Just to go to the quarry again. I'm wasting my time then, though, aren't I? But that's, is that enough stone for the rest of the game, then? And then I could get the trader that lets me turn stone into marble. Let's go back to the quarry. Back to the quarry. That is five stone coming up now. I'm just going to pop it there on uh, that times five space. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. What's he doing? Earning points while I'm messing around uh, with marble. So he's going to... Uh, he's got two workers now at the guardhouse. He can't free his own workers. There's none there. Oh no, he's he's going to get them off my board, isn't he? Oh well, he can't hand in my workers. He can release his workers from my board uh, for two tax money. And he can put three tax money in. Get rid of a debt. He doesn't flip it, just discards it. And gains a virtue. Look at this. I've got to go to the tax stand, haven't I? I, I? I want to get the 20 stone from going to the quarry again, but I'm going to go to the tax stand. That's two virtue lost again. But look at all of this. These beautiful metal riches I'm coming back with. This is enough to sort me out for life. That's probably Constantine's trap I've just fallen into. It's going straight to the tax stand. Uh, yeah, he's going. he's still going there. Doesn't say anything about what if there's no coins there. He's going there, losing two virtue and gaining a marble. So he does get a point there. But he's he's sunk to my level, almost. And I get two tax discount now for doing things. 
Well, my arrest should have been free, shouldn't it? But I would have the money now anyway. It's it's worked itself out. I think we should go to the workshop. I want to go to the quarry again. I've already got 11 stone. But he's left my workers there. Yeah, I'm going to go there again. That's six stone. So now I need to do a quick shuffle of his cards. Because I can turn that... If I get that trader, I can do... My two actions can be two stone for a marble, one stone for a virtue. Try and keep that thing going. And I can hire him for just two coins because I don't pay either of those tax at the moment with my terrible... The terrible state of my virtue. That is oh, what a awful shot. You didn't you didn't see the state of that uh, ripple shuffle there. So what's he up to? He's going to the tax stand, be my guest. Losing two virtue, gaining a marble. What do I want to do? Quarry? No, I can't go to the quarry again. I could arrest all of my people from the quarry and get loads of workers back. That's actually not a bad idea. Before he arrests them all. I want to go to the workshop, don't I? I do, but I'm going to go to the town centre. I've got two workers there. So my first taxed one I don't pay for, but the second one goes to the supply. I'm going to arrest my workers from there. So they just come straight back to my player board and his workers from there. So they go into my arrest place. Constantine, what are you up to, mate? He is going to the storehouse. It's his first worker there. He gets a virtue for each. It's just the one then. So I want to go to the workshop. I get a two tax discount on that. So I only have to pay two to hire a worker. I'm going to pay one to skip this gatekeeper on a black market reset release two workers. It's tempting. And maybe I'll still get her in the future. But I want right now the, the, the trader will give me, you can't see him right now, uh, let me convert stone to marble. It's a 2 to 1 rate instead of 3 to 1. Constantine is going to the black market. He can take the middle space and he puts a future scheme card in his discard pile and loses a virtue. Oh dear. Right. As for me, I've got my stone, I've got my marble, I could build the fountain. Make debts not worth as much negative stuff to me. I'm going to go to the storehouse for now, though. Storehouse, one action per worker. I'm going to do the actions on my cards. So one stone for a virtue. Things have gotten more expensive again. Uh, two stone for a marble. Because I do need a marble for this building, too. Then, Constantine... Oh, oh he, the other guild hall card is the one that he's just added. He is going to the guild hall now. Doesn't do anything. We just imagine the building that he's built for himself. There we go. Then. Okay, do I want to build? I probably don't want to wait too long to build. I could build and then get an adornment that gives me three more building cards. I could, if I built the gallery, I'd be able to get that, adorn that adornment instantly. But I'm going to need a brick. So let's go to the mines, which gives me two bricks. A brick plus one for every worker there. Constantine is going to the guardhouse. So he's got three actions there. Does that mean he's going to put nine coins in the tax stand? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
Does that mean he's going to put nine coins in the tax stand and get three virtue? I think it does. But I... <laughs> as, as tempting as that would be any other time, I've got more money than I know what to do with. I'm going to go to the guild hall myself. And I'm going to build this gallery. See, since they've got instant effects, I don't really need to have them on display, do I? Uh, so this is going to cost me a brick, a marble, and three stone. And it gives me an adornment straight away. If we pop up these adornments... Oh, oh, you're right, you're right. Thanks, Adam. He would, instead of doing one of those, he would spend two coins to get his workers back. He'd do the third action. See, he hasn't arrested any of mine for a while. Thankfully. I think all of his arrests came really early in his deck. What have I do? I'm building. I've spent the stuff. I'm going to get an adornment. So we could reactivate the power of the building straight away. But I wouldn't be able to put an adornment anywhere because I haven't got any more buildings without adornments. So do I want to release all of my workers from prison right now? I haven't got any in there. I'm going to go for three points and three building cards. So that gets tucked under there. Some more points. And then let's have a look in my player area at these three building cards. Ten pointers. Okay, so we need a lot of gold, a lot of wood for this one. The Gambler's Den debts are three negative points. Well, why would I want that? Because oh, it's worth 10 points. So, have the gambler's den, but don't have any debts. Uh, the arcade, a virtue per adornment at the end of the game. I would need gold, though, for all of this. Let's have the costs most visible. So, some very juicy point buildings, but a bit of a fortune to get my hands on. I could get a gold from the mines if I can put another worker there. So, that was me doing a build. Constantine's going to the King's Storehouse. Oh dear, a virtue for each worker there. He's got two. I could go to the town centre and make some arrests right now, couldn't I? Yes. First one's free. I'm going to arrest. So it can be from two locations. And I can do three arrests. I'm going to arrest them from the storehouse. That's my free one, because I don't pay the tax. Second one, money goes to the supply. I'm going to arrest his three from the guardhouse. Third one, pay money to the supply. I'm going to arrest mine from the King's Storehouse so I can get my artisan back. What do I want? No, I want to leave them there, don't I? So that... I can do three storehouse actions. Am I bothered about doing that? I want to clear his things off there. And I wouldn't mind having multiple actions there. I could arrest them all off the town centre, I suppose. Just to have more workers back. Yeah, let's leave them on the King's Storehouse for now. Ro oh no, that's a third location, isn't it? I can't do three locations. Let's not do three. Let's just do two. Constantine is going for the town centre. And then he's arresting, oh yeah, place with the most workers, guardhouse or king's storehouse. King's storehouse comes higher up, so he's arresting those. Should have freed him myself. Uh, I think you can arrest your own. I know you, you can't in the co-op. Uh, but I think you can arrest your own... Where does it say here? Yeah, it's, it says at the bottom on the normal rules, yeah, if, if they're opposing workers, they go in your le top left section. If they're your own workers, they go back in your own supply. So... Yeah, I was a bit confused with that, Jack. I don't, I don't know if he would still do it because he um, gains the virtue for doing it. Does he gain the virtue? 
Yeah, because he gains a virtue, so he's essentially paying those three coins to gain a virtue, so would he still do it? And similarly, would he keep going back to the tax stand if there are no coins there? But he did gain a marble, didn't he? He lost two virtue, but he gained the marble. I don't know. Let's see, so he's gone to the town centre and he's just arrested my people at the king's store. Oh no, he wouldn't, because I had three people at the town centre, he would arrest them. There's only two at the king's storehouse. I'm going to go to the king's storehouse, do three actions. One of them, gain a virtue for a stone. Two stone, so going from the five to a three, for a marble, because it's all points. And then, I can do these multiple times. Do I want more virtue? If I want to build in the cathedral, I do. Hmm, do I want to build in the cathedral? I've got loads of money, yeah. Virtue, because I can build now, can't I? Is it this space or the space above that I want to be on? Is it from this space I'm not allowed to build in the cathedral? Cathedral space, cathedral space. I do if there's a an available space, yeah. Four or less, okay. So why don't I not gain that marble and gain a virtue instead? Because now I'm allowed to build in the cathedral, which I might do next turn. So I'll just do three of that. He's going to the black market. He's going to trigger a reset, which I don't mind. I'm not there. He... So he's going to that space. So he's losing a virtue and gaining a marble. Not too happy about that. But then, his workers get arrested, he's got three, so he loses a virtue, and he's got the most, so he gains a debt. <laughs> Fine by me. And, oh yeah, this changes, so we can get some gold or some marble and stuff there. I do want gold for these buildings, don't I? He's not going to come there for a while, though. I can wait on that. I'm going to go to... It's tempting to go to the storehouse again. Just I could I could just do virtue, 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 couldn't I? Go all the way up. I want to build in the cathedral though before I lower my virtue again. So the first oh, I haven't got gold though, have I? First step is gold. So I could go back to the mines. I'd get a gold that way. If I could get two gold for coming down here, and then I'd have to go back to the storehouse to increase my virtue again. Or we do the virtue now. Hmm. Let's go to the black market. Coin spent, virtue lost. I get two gold. Constantine, guild hall. Takes the first possible action. Oh, he's going up the cathedral. Okay, so he goes there. Not many spaces left in the cathedral now. Discards that. This oh, and there's two cards left in the cathedral. Uh, and he gets a virtue. Then I'm going to go back to the storehouse and. I need to spend one for a virtue for sure, so I'm allowed to spend. I'm allowed to go to the cathedral. I think I'm going to spend. I want four left over, because that's the next stage of the cathedral. Oh, I couldn't get more, of course. So I can spend three. Well, I'll spend one more for a virtue and one for a marble, and then I've got four left over. Then, look at that collection there at the storehouse that he's surely going to arrest soon. Uh, there we go, town centre. He's going to go to the town centre. He's going to pop a coin in the tax. That money! And arrest my workers at the storehouse. Which I'm tempted to get to the guardhouse and just grab them all back. But for now, while I am at my most virtuous... Hi, Moran. Uh, it's going all right, I think. He's not been as aggressive as he usually is. 
at the uh, guild hall. I'm going to see if I can catch him up at the cathedral. So I am going to go here. Yes, yes, I am. I'm going to go here. I trigger a black market reset because that's what this space does. Flip that over. He goes to prison. He's got three people in prison, loses a virtue. He's got the most in prison. He gains a debt. Happy with that. And I am paying a gold and a building card. Let's do the one that needs six wood. I'm not getting that, am I? Uh, you have to pay a building card as well. Go up there. I've got two points and a reward of a virtue and two wood. Remember, I said I wasn't going to need wood for it. I wasn't going to have wood for anything. There's two right there. Constantine, what are you playing at? He's putting two more. Oh, have I got to go to the tax stand? Uh, he's discarding this worker. And he's got one worker there, so he puts one future scheme card in the discard. And then everything slides along nicely. This is six, nine, eleven coins there. Every ten coins is a point. I could just go back to the cathedral again. If I get this, two stone, three gold, and a marble. of Ten points and a virtue for every adornment. I've got two already. Three wouldn't be a big reach. I'd get to flip a debt. The, the Gambler's Den, that's from the base game. The Gambler's Den, is that only if you've got unflipped debts, or is that all debts? Yeah, each unpaid debt. So if I paid the debt off with this adornment, say... I wouldn't lose the three points because I'm one marble away from being able to build that for 10 points. But then I'd be ages away from getting the stuff for the arcade. Which I wanted for the adornments. Let's do it. Gambler's Den. I want a marble then. So I'm going to have to start again at the King's storehouse. So maybe we want to come to the guardhouse. Where I could flip a debt. So maybe I want to get all of this money while it's there. It's 11 coins. I'm not leaving it. Go two spaces down on the virtue track. I can gain virtue. Like nobody's business. <laughs> Collection of coins. Uh, I Constantine is going to the town centre. And so unfortunately he's going to arrest my workers from the place with the most, yeah. Which is the guardhouse, right? Yeah, it's excluded tax stand, isn't it? So I probably need to arrest my own workers from the tax stand. But I think, do you know what I'm going to do? Let's come to the guardhouse on my turn. I only get one action, but I'm going to, I get no discount, so two's got to go back to the tax stand. Three to the supply. I'm going to stop him from being able to get a marble. I'm going to grab all of my workers back, including my artisan. And maybe arrest all of his from the town centre. He's going to go to the guardhouse. And... First thing he does is release his own workers. Which is good because he's only got one action. So he's not going to get his own back. So I think I'm going to go to the guardhouse again. I've got two actions. I'm going to turn in all of his workers. One, two, three, four, five coins. Oh, yeah, there's I thought I was running out of coins, but they're all just hiding down here. One, two, three, four, five. And then with my second action, I'm going to pay off a debt. Why not? I'm going to pay. So it's three to the tax stand, which I could still come back to. Three to the supply, flip this debt over, and it becomes a virtue. Constantine, King's Storehouse, it's his only worker there, and he gets a virtue for it. Now for me, loads of money, loads of workers. I need a marble, don't I? To...
build that gambler's den for 10 points. Let's go to... I'm going to send my artisan there, because then it's going to arrest him. And if he goes straight back there, he's not going to get two virtue for it. Two actions, because it's my artisan. I'm going to do... Do you know what? I'm tempted to just do two marble. And forget the cathedral for now. I think I'm going to do a marble and a virtue. So that's three of it. Now forget the virtue. Two marble. Then, Constantine, how's he doing? Ah, he's going to the guild hall. This just means accelerating the, the end of the game. I have enough stuff now, don't I, to build the gambler's den. So let's get it built. I need to give up another worker. That gets rid of these two apprentices. Slide them over. Then... I'm building this so it's a... Oh no, I don't want two marble. Because I want a stone left over to build the building I want to build. Uh, yeah, so I gained a virtue. So a stone, a gold, and three marble. To build the gambler's den. It's all going to have to... <laughs> tuck underneath. I've got all of the symbols. That's all we need to know. I do lose two virtue for building this. But that's going to be 10 points at the end of the game. But all debts, all unpaid debts, minus three points. Am I needed for something? I may be needed after this. Uh, right. So that's my build. 10 more points for me. At the black market, Constantine's going to the right hand space, losing a virtue and gaining two marble. He's got a lot of points in marble. Over to me, I've definitely got enough money for an adornment. I'd want to gain a debt. If I was going to flip one over, though. What can I do? Get all my workers back from prison. What, one? Maybe I don't want an adornment yet. Work on getting some gold and some marble to try and do this. It's another ten-point building and a virtue for every adornment. I should have at least three. I've got no tools on any of my workers, either. Hmm. I think we need to... Let's start building up the quarry again. Yeah, got no stone. So first worker there gets me two stone, because I've got the quarry there. Constantine, going for the town centre. Puts a thing in there. Where have I got the most? It is the guardhouse. Because it's everywhere but the tax stand. I three stone and a marble and I could build the fountain which is four points or actually I've got four things I'm not too corrupt I could lose a building card and build in the cathedral again I wonder how far we could make it up there probably not very far and if I do this it forces a black market reset he goes to prison reset that He's got more than three, loses a virtue. He's got the most, he gains a debt. I'm going to pay two wood, two stone to move up the cathedral. Oh, and lose a card. There's two builds left in the game. I'm not going to have enough time to build up to this 10 point arcade. I'm going to discard that. And then I get the last reward card, which is a virtue and two stone. You still get virtue for going up there. Constantine is gonna uh, go in the guild hall. Where's the guild hall gone? Oh, yes, this, isn't it? Uh, and he goes up a virtue and he goes up in the cathedral. Can't take the card. So he's got eight points on me up there. Then, where else am I? I can get some more stone. That would be three more stone going there. And then just go straight over here and try to turn it into virtue for a load of points. Or I could turn it into a marble and then get this fountain built. It would be the last build of the game. 
I could try getting another couple of building cards. But the, the next card he draws could be Guildhall and end the game. I think we get one more turn after he ends the game. Yeah, each player gets one last turn. So I could just go get the marble and then do another build in the cathedral. That's only three points. Could I get some more points from somewhere else? Getting tools are worth points as well. Like your first tools worth one, two of them two, three, four, and so on and so on. A bit late to get some good points from that now. I I could get the marble up. I could get the marble and stone I need from the black market for this build here. And I would get a virtue for building it. Just not a particularly exciting power. Doesn't get me a lot of points or anything. I've got plenty of money for an adornment. I could just get the four point adornment and not worry. I think that's something good to do. I'm going to go to the guild hall. This worker goes on top of an already placed one. Two money in the tax stand. Three money in the supply. Grab the four point adornment. Get all of my workers back from prison. One. Plus we see a new adornment now. Get three bricks when you build that. Constantine. I was going to say Cecil then. He should be a Cecil, I think. Uh, he arrests... Okay, it's just a tie for all of my workers. So the top is mines. He arrested it. He arrested mine from the mines. So do I just want to go to the black market and build that thing? And then maybe do an adornment with the last turn and get three more points? Because stone and all that isn't worth points. I've got no one in the prison, which is nice. I think, yeah, go to the black market, pay a coin, lose a virtue, get a marble and a stone. And then Constantine is going to the guard house. He's got two actions there. He can, for his first action, get all of his workers back, which he needs. And then his second action is going to be putting my workers back for a marble. But he's not going to flip any of his... He's not going to get rid of his debts, which I'm happy about. So I've now got enough to build this fountain. Which I think I'm just going to do to trigger the end of the game. He gets one more turn. I get one more turn. That's it. So... Guildhall, three stone, one marble. Builds this fountain. I get a virtue for building it, which gets away... Gets rid of my negative point there. And yeah, there have been 12 builds. The game is ending. So we get one more turn, including the person who ended the game. Constantine, what's your big move? He's going to the King's Storehouse. It's a decent move. It's earning him two points. Going to the King's Storehouse, moving up from minus three points to minus one point. And then for me, how many coins have I got? Two, four, six, eight, ten. But I think however many coins I've got, I could grab these for a point, but I would lose three points in the virtue I would lose. So I think the best thing to do is to just run over and grab an adornment. Even if I'm losing the point from leftover money, I'm netting two points, losing one point, gaining three. So two go to the tax, three go to the supply. And yeah, there's no instant effect. I don't think you'd gain the virtue again, do you? If uh, if I got this ability here, I don't think I get the... I think you get the bottom ability of the building again, not the... Where's the bit on adornments? Just checking just in case. Mind you, gaining a virtue doesn't matter, does it? That's not going to gain me anything. Why would I want that? I'm not losing any points. It's not even worth looking up. Let me know if you know. Uh, but I'll just grab that for three points. I get three bricks, which I think are useless to me. But there we go. That is it, I believe. So, should we find out how I did? Let's, um, 
put this to the test, get rid of all sorts of notifications and stuff. Garfield Games, please. Uh, I realised, I think, towards the end of the Viscount stream, actually, uh, a helpful viewer let me know that there is a, a lovely app that you can get for Garfield Games, and it works for all the stuff you, you can put in. Uh, what are you playing with? I'm playing with the expansion, and I'm doing solo mode. Uh, so, I'm not Bertha, though, am I? I've, I've got to get it right. I am Gisela. Who isn't there? Oh, maybe she's at the end, because she's... Yeah, she's at the end, because she's from the expansion. So, uh, buildings. I have quite a lot, actually. 14, 20, 4... And he doesn't build buildings, so he's got none. Final position on the cathedral. Well, he's got 12 there. And I've got four. Not too shabby. Uh, next up is virtue. Position on the virtue track. We can see that down here, I think. I am on nothing. He is on minus one. Pop that in there. One one little thing I'd suggest. Uh, if you see this, Garfield, put a, a minus somewhere here because if it's negative, unless I'm wrong, you have to just press it. So if you're on like minus 10, you have to just press it 10 times. Only a little uh, thing. Unpaid debts. Well, I paid off all of my debts. Unfortunately, Constantine has got uh, minus six points on there. A gold, golden marble or a point each. Okay, I did not get any gold, but Constantine got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 points of marble. I don't think it's going to save him, though, is it? Uh, a victory point for 10 silver. I haven't quite got 10, so nothing there. Prison. And this still applies to Constantine. Minus 1 for every 2 workers in prison. Oh, yeah, he got them all out, didn't he? Never mind. Uh, I've got three in prison, so that's minus one point to me. Uh, adornments. Four, seven, ten, thirteen. Oh, I haven't been doing his adornments, have I? I've been forgetting. He should be refreshing the display of adornments for me. Uh, anytime he goes to the guild hall, he also gets an adornment. So, this is a little bit makeshifty now because he would have got different ones but also so it would have been maybe he'd have taken the ones I liked because he would have taken the ones with the most points uh, but also he would have refreshed the display for me and uh, made adornments more attractive to get so one two three four five six let's just give him six adornments now and just hope that it uh, balances out he takes the one with the most points there was a six pointer coming out it gives you two uh, corruption, but six points. So he got 10, 13, 16 points of adornments. More than me. So he's caught up there. And then tools. I didn't get any tools for my uh, workers. I really like getting tools. Workers in the guild hall. Uh, so he gets a point per worker. I don't. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not too bad. And then final scores, very close actually. Final scores, 40 to 38. So asterisk on that, isn't there an asterisk on every play I ever do? He probably could have gotten those two points from um, different adornments being out. If uh, I was hoovering up all the ones that were worth any decent points there. But yeah, it would have also have led to the display not stagnating. <gasps> I thought I'd remembered all of the extra stuff from the expansion, but forgot that. It's far too neat, isn't it? Doing behaving so much. Uh, so there we go. That is, after a bit of a bumpy start, uh, technical issues for, I think, based on how many streams there have been, been pretty lucky on the old technical issues front. I think that went pretty well. So that is Architects of the West Kingdom, solo mode, with the expansion on. I think, yeah, I'll talk about this more in the video after the co-op one comes out in a couple of weeks. But yeah, the the Age of uh, Artisans expansion really adds massively to it, and I really, really like that. So I think that is it for another stream. Thank you for joining me. And uh, yeah, especially, well, not especially, uh, also 
if you joined me uh, in uh, Facebook or Twitch. How was it on those platforms if you saw me on there? Was it smooth? Did it go all right? I know, to forget that bit at the start where I just kept coming on and off and on and off. That's not going to happen again, right? Whoever has technical issues. Certainly not streamers. Uh, yeah, let me know all of those things. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel or however I am. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitch. All of those different verbs for things. Do things that will make us and yourself very, very happy. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I'll be back tomorrow, 8 p.m. BST, for some Feast for Odin, which I haven't played since I did the playthrough about a year and a half ago or so. Probably not quite that long. Uh, but yeah, I'm really, really keen to get back to it. All this is made possible thanks to Patreon. It's linked in the corner. A little robot is going to be coming into the chat to tell you about it on YouTube anyway. Uh, yeah, any support there will be massively appreciated. It's the reason I'm able to do this right now. Uh, and I would love to do it more. Thank you very, very much for watching, though. I will see you tomorrow or wherever we meet again. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. 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 Nearly got the button. Bye-bye.